This week's story is sponsored by Audible Kids. Please visit audiblekids.com forward slash story nori for your free audiobook download. Jack and the Beanstalk Hello, this is Natasha and I'm dropping by with a famous fairy tale which comes from Cornwall. If you look at a map of England, you'll see that it's shaped a bit like a boot and the foot of the boot is Cornwall. It's a very beautiful part of the world and long ago it was famous for its giants. This tale is called Jack and the Beanstalk. But before the story, I'd just like to tell you about an audiobook that you can download from our sponsor, Audible Kids. It's a lovely farmyard tale about a pig called Wilbur and a very clever spider called Charlotte. Charlotte uses her web to save Wilbur's life. The recording is very special because it's read by the author himself, E.B. White. The book's called Charlotte's Web and you can find it by going to audiblekids.com forward slash story or by following the link in the story nori sidebar. Now, where was I? Ah yes, Jack and the Beanstalk. There was once upon a time a poor widow who had an only son named Jack and a cow called Milky White. And all they had to live on was the milk the cow gave every morning, which they carried to the market and sold. But one morning, Milky White gave no milk. What shall we do? What shall we do? said the widow, wringing her hands. Cheer up, mother. I'll go and get some work somewhere, said Jack. We've tried that before, and nobody would take you, said his mother. Sell, we must sell Milky White, and with the money, start a shop or something. All right, mother, said Jack. It's market day today, and I'll soon sell Milky White, and then we'll see what we can do. So he took the cow, and off he started. He hadn't gone far, when he met a funny old looking man who said to him, Good morning, Jack. Good morning to you, said Jack, and wondered how he knew his name. Well, Jack, where are you off to? said the man. I'm going to the market to sell our cow there. Oh, you look the proper sort of chap to sell cows, said the man. I wonder if you know how many beans makes five. Two in each hand and one in your mouth, says Jack, as sharp as a needle. Right you are, says the man. And here they are, the very beans themselves, he went on, pulling out of his pocket a number of strange looking beans. As you are so sharp, says he, I don't mind doing a swap with you. You're a cow for these beans. Go along, says Jack. You take me for a fool. Ah, you don't know what these beans are, said the man. If you plant them overnight, by morning they grow right up to the sky. Really? said Jack. You don't say so. Yes, that is so. And if it doesn't turn out to be true, you can have your cow back. Right, says Jack, and hands him over milky white and pockets the beans. Back home goes Jack and says to his mother, You'll never guess, mother, what I got for milky white. And his mother becomes very excited. Five pounds? Ten? Fifteen? No, it can't be twenty. I told you you couldn't guess. What do you see to these beans? They're magical. Plant them overnight and 
What? says Jack's mother. Have you been such a fool, such a dolt, such an idiot? Take that, take that and take that. And as for your precious beans here, they go out the window and off with you to bed. Not a sop shall you drink and not a bit shall you swallow to this very night. So Jack went upstairs to his little room in the attic and sad and sorry he was to be sure. At last he dropped off to sleep. When he woke up, the room looked so funny. The sun was shining into part of it and all the rest was quite dark and shady. So Jack jumped up and went to the window. And what do you think he saw? Why, the beans that his mother had thrown out of the window into the garden had sprung up into a giant beanstalk, which went up and up till it reached the sky. So the man spoke the truth after all. The beanstalk grew up quite close past Jack's window, so all he had to do was open it and give a jump onto the beanstalk, which ran up just like a big ladder. So Jack climbed, and he 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 climbed, till at last he reached the sky. And when he got there, he found a long, broad road going as straight as a dart. So he walked along, and he walked along, and he walked along, until he came to a great, big tall house and on the doorstep there was a great big tall woman. Good morning ma'am, says Jack quite polite like. Could you be so kind as to give me some breakfast? For he was as hungry as a hunter. It's breakfast you want is it? says the great big tall woman. It's breakfast you'll be if you don't move off from here. My man is an ogre and there's nothing he likes better than boys broiled on toast. You better be moving on or he'll be coming. Oh, please, ma'am, do give me something to eat, ma'am. Oh, you've had nothing to eat since yesterday morning. Really and truly, ma'am, says Jack. I may as well be broiled as die of hunger. Well, the ogre's wife was not half so bad after all. So she took Jack into the kitchen and gave him a hunk of bread and cheese and a jug of milk. But Jack hadn't half finished these when thump, thump, thump. And the whole house began to tremble with the noise of someone coming. <gasps> Goodness gracious me! It's my old man, said the ogre's wife. What on earth shall I do? Come along, quick, jump in here. And she bundled Jack into the oven just as the ogre came in. He was a big one to be sure. At his belt he had three calves strung up by the heels and he unhooked them and threw them down on the table and said, Fee, fi, fu, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead. I'll have his bones to grind my bread. Nonsense, dear, said his wife. You're dreaming. Or perhaps you smell the scraps of that little boy you ate so much for yesterday's dinner. Here you go and have a wash and a tidy up. And by the time you come back, your breakfast will be ready for you. So off the ogre went. And Jack was just going to jump out of the oven and run away when the woman told him, Wait till he's asleep. He always has a doze after breakfast. Well, the ogre has his breakfast 
And after that, he goes to a big chest and takes out a couple of bags of gold. And down he sits and counts, till at last his head began to nod and he began to snore till the whole house shook again. Then Jack crept out on tiptoe from his oven and as he was passing the ogre, he took one of the bags of gold under his arm and off he pelters till he comes to the beanstalk and then he throws down the bag of gold which of course fell into his mother's garden and then he climbed down and climbed down till at last he got home and told his mother and showed her the gold and said, Well, mother, wasn't I right about the beans? They are really magical, you see? So they lived on the bag of gold for some time, but at last they came to the end of it, and Jack made up his mind to try his luck once more at the top of the beanstalk. So one fine morning he rose up early and got onto the beanstalk and he climbed 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 till at last he came out onto the road again and up to the great tall house he had been to before. There, sure enough, was the great tall woman standing on the doorstep. Good morning, ma'am says Jack, as bold as brass. Could you be so good as to give me something to eat? Go away, my boy, says the big tall woman, or else my man will eat you up for breakfast. But aren't you the youngster who came here once before? Do you know that very day my man missed one of his fine gold bags? That's strange, ma'am, said Jack. I dare say I could tell you something about that. But I'm so hungry I can't speak till I've had something to eat. Well, the big tall woman was so curious that she took him in and gave him something to eat. But he had scarcely begun munching it as slowly as he could when... Thump! 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 They heard the giant's footsteps and his wife hid Jack away in the oven again. All happened as it did before. In came the ogre. He said, fee fi fo fum and had his breakfast of three broiled oxen. Then he said, Wife, bring me the hen that leaves the golden eggs. So she brought it, and the ogre said, Lay. And it laid an egg all of gold. And then the ogre began to nod his head and to snore until the house shook. Then Jack crept out of the oven on tiptoe and caught hold of the golden hen and was off before you could say Jack Robinson. But this time the hen gave a cackle which woke the ogre. And just as Jack got out of the house he heard him calling... Wife, wife, what have you done with my golden hen? And the wife said, Why, my dear? But that was all Jack heard, for he rushed off to the beanstalk and climbed down like a horse on fire. And when he got home, he showed his mother the wonderful hen and said, Lay to it, and it laid a golden egg. Every time he said, lay. Well, it wasn't long before Jack made up his mind to have another try at his luck up there at the top of the beanstalk. So one fine morning he rose up early and he got to the beanstalk and he climbed and he climbed and he climbed and he climbed till he got to the top. But this time he knew better than to go straight to the ogre's house. And when he got near it, he waited behind a bush till he saw the ogre's wife come out with a pail to get some water. And then he crept into the house and got into a big copper pot. He hadn't been there long 
when he heard thump, 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 as before, and in came the ogre and his wife. Fee, fay, fu, fum. I smell the blood of an Englishman. I smell him, wife. I smell him. Dear, my dearie, says the ogre's wife. Then, if it's that little rogue that stole your gold, and the hen that laid the golden eggs, he's sure to have got in the oven. And they both rushed to the oven. But Jack wasn't there, luckily. So the ogre sat down to the breakfast and ate it. But every now and then he would mutter, Eh, I could have sworn. And he'd get up and he'd search the larder and the cupboards and everything, only luckily he didn't think of the copper pot. After breakfast was over, the ogre called out, Wife, bring me my golden harp. So she brought it and put it on the table before him. Then he said, Sing! And the golden harp sang most beautifully. And it went on singing till the ogre fell asleep and commenced to snore like thunder. Then Jack lifted up the copper lid very quietly and got down like a mouse and crept on his hands and knees till he came to the table and up he crawled, caught hold of the golden harp and dashed with it towards the door. But the harp called out quite loud, Master! Master! And the ogre woke just in time to see Jack running off with his harp. Jack ran as fast as he could and the ogre came rushing after and would soon have caught him, only Jack had a head start and dodged him a bit and knew where he was going. When he got to the beanstalk, the ogre was not more than twenty yards away when suddenly he saw Jack disappear. And when he came to the end of the road, he saw Jack underneath climbing down for fear of his life. Well, the ogre didn't like trusting himself to such a ladder and he stood and waited. So Jack got another head start. But just then, the harp cried out, Master! Master! And the ogre swung himself down the beanstalk, which shook with his weight. Down climbs Jack, and after him climbs the ogre. By this time, Jack had climbed down and down and climbed down till he was very nearly home. So he called out, Mother! Mother! Bring me an axe! Bring me an axe! And the mother came rushing out with the axe in her hand. But when she came to the beanstalk, she stood stock still with fright. For she saw there the ogre with his legs just through the clouds. But Jack jumped down and got hold of the axe and gave a chop at the beanstalk, which cut it half in two. The ogre felt the beanstalk shake and quiver, so he stopped to see what was the matter. Then Jack gave another chop with the axe and the beanstalk was cut in two and began to topple over. Then the ogre fell down and broke his crown and the beanstalk came toppling after. Then Jack showed his mother his golden harp, and what was showing that and selling the golden eggs, Jack and his mother became very rich, and he married a great princess, and they lived happily ever after. And that was the story, Nori, of Jack and the Beanstalk. I do hope that you enjoyed it. Bertie says that he really likes to know what you think of our stories. If you drop by at storynori.com, you can leave a comment on each story. All you have to do is give your first name. There's no need even for an email address. And if you like Story Nori, it really helps us if you can say something nice about us on our iTunes page.
For now, from me, Natasha, bye-bye.